If you're searching for better comfort and ergonomics when playing on your Nintendo Switch in handheld mode, you might have come across the Hori Split Pad Pro. They even have some cool designs, like this awesome Mega Man edition. But are the ergonomics and the controls any good? Does it justify the price? And are there any changes to the Hori Split Pad Pro Mega Man edition compared to the normal Hori Split Pad Pro? My name is RobinB360 and welcome to another video. If you're new to the channel, make sure to like and subscribe to see more of my content. Also make sure to watch the entire video so you can make a well-informed decision to buy or pass this product. And don't miss out on the special announcement I have for you at the end of this video. Now let's continue. So what does this product claim to do? The boxes of Hori products are always made out of high quality, which gives off a good first impression. On its backside, we see that Hori promises a full-size controller experience in handheld mode. So let's see if it can meet your personal demands. Starting with the design and ergonomics of the Hori Split Pad Pro. The overall design is exactly the same as on the regular Hori Split Pad Pro, which is a lot wider than the regular Joy-Cons. But on this specific controller, you get the blue bomber we all know and love. Mega Man is represented on the left side with a signature text and on the right side in its classic NES look. And in the middle, you even get a few bosses on it from Mega Man 2, which is pretty cool. They even made the A, B, X, Y buttons in retro style compared to the plain letters on the normal Hori Split Pad Pro, which is a neat little detail. The top side and back side are in all blue color and have similar colored shoulder buttons and backside buttons. Backside even has a small texture on it for better grip. When you hold the Hori Split Pad Pro, you instantly feel it provides a lot more comfort. It's not as much comfort as on an Xbox or PlayStation controller, as you can see here, but it's definitely a step up from the regular Joy-Cons. Besides the improved comfort, you can also notice the improved ergonomics when you finish a long gaming session. This is not only noticeable due to the increased size of the controller, but also because of the placement of the sticks, the regular buttons and the shoulder buttons. Speaking of the controls, let's dive into them a bit deeper. Starting with the analog sticks. Both have a nice spring to them and feel like they are made out of good quality. If you are afraid of dead zones, I would say you don't need to worry about that too much, as the accuracy is almost identical to the sticks on the official Nintendo Switch Pro controller. Besides dead zones, stick drift might also be a thing that you might want some information about, which is basically an issue where the controller moves in a certain direction by itself. But during my playtime on both the original Hori Split Pad Pro and the Mega Man Edition, I didn't encounter this issue at all. Moving on to the D-pad, all I can say is that it works perfectly. An example would be that in fighting games you can easily do some super moves without any frustration. The D-pad feels a bit soft like on the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller, which I personally like and might even be a little bit better. The A, B, X, Y buttons have a nice press to them and also work exactly as you would expect. When I look at the other buttons on the front of the Hori Split Pad Pro, like the plus, minus, home and capture, and the two turbo and assign buttons, I would say they feel a lot more mushy. Some people like this, others absolutely don't. Personally, I didn't have any issue with this, but I thought it would be a good point to mention to you. Another good thing to point out is that even though the Hori Split Pad Pro is bigger than the regular Joy-Cons, you can still charge it in the official Nintendo Switch dock, which is also a big plus. When we look at the shoulder buttons of the Hori Split Pad Pro, they feel like a step up from the original Joy-Cons. They are a lot wider and the ZL and ZR even have a light travel to them, which is nice. The back buttons are also placed well, so you won't press them accidentally while gaming. But what about the features? As you might have seen in my original Hori Split Pad Pro review, it was lacking a lot of features that the original Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons have. For example, it has no rumble, no gyro, no NFC reader to use amiibos, and no wireless functionality. And I'm sad to inform you that the same applies for this Mega Man edition. That means if you want to use any of these features, you need to switch back to the original Joy-Cons. The only feature you could expand on on the Hori Split Pad Pro is to make it a wired controller with their newly released Hori Split Pad Pro adapter. But it will cost you $79.99 or euros, which is kind of steep in my opinion. But besides giving you the ability to turn it into a controller, it also offers you a headphone jack and some buttons to adjust the volume or mute your headphones mic, if it has one. 
All of this doesn't mean the Hori Splitpad Pro doesn't have any handy features. And actually has two nice features. The first would be the assign button on the front of the Hori Splitpad Pro Joy-Cons, which you can use to program the back buttons to any button you like. And the second feature would be the turbo buttons, which work more than fine and can be handy for games in which you need to perform repetitive actions. So how does the battery work? As the Hori Splitpad Pro only works in handheld mode, you don't need to charge it separately. You can use it immediately when you connect it to your Nintendo Switch. When connected, I got about 2.5 to 3 hours of playtime out of it, but that was when I was playing more demanding games. I've also read something about users having some battery drain issues on their Nintendo Switch, but personally, I didn't come across this issue at all. So I could name the price and share my personal thoughts of whether you should buy the Hori Splitpad Pro Mega Man Edition or not, but what's more important is what you think. So if you take all this information I provided to you in this video, and you would know that this product is currently priced at $50 for the normal version and $60 for the Mega Man Edition, would you say it's worth buying this product or not? Let us all know in the comments below. My personal opinion would be that the Hori Splitpad Pro is worth the price if you want better gaming comfort and ergonomics, maybe want a cool design like this Mega Man Edition and some extra features like the back buttons, the assign button and turbo button, but don't mind missing all the other features of the original Joy-Cons like Rumble, Gyro, an NFC reader for your Amiibo collection and wireless functionality. But we're not done yet because as promised, I have a special announcement for you. And that is that I will be reviewing the Nixie Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons this month on this channel, which is a little bit lower priced and has some interesting features. So if you don't want to miss it, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification button so you don't miss out on this video. Just click on this. Thank you for watching and I will see you on the next video.